Hello everyone, Trophy Wine Hunter. Welcome to my video channel. Today I'm gonna do a tequila tasting. And I know everyone's saying, Trophy, what is this? You're a wine drinker. Why are you drinking and reviewing tequila? Okay, so here's the scoop. Um, my friends told me that The Rock, Dwayne Johnson had just produced a new tequila product and it was so hard to get. So two things, I love The Rock. I love Wayne Johnson and someone told me it's so hard to get so I had to get this so I was fortunate to get this bottle I'm told it's completely sold out in BC um, and so I bought the bottle I'm thinking well I don't know anything about tequila so I better start to learn something about tequila I have some uh, Patron at, at home but I thought well I better learn some more and I wanted to buy some expensive tequila and so I did some more research and I'm just trying to share my research as you see We've drank a lot over the last week or so. I've drank with many other people who are tequila drinkers. So got some knowledge. I hope to share that knowledge with everyone. Um, don't worry. I'm gonna. This is a one-off. I'm not gonna change this into a tequila channel. I know nothing about tequila. Uh, I'm just gonna share my thoughts with it, and hopefully, um, everyone will learn a little bit. Um, I know I learned a lot, and I was. It's kind of fun. So, excuse me for this diversion from my regular videos, but I thought it'd just be a fun. Uh, thing to do and um, I learned a lot through this so hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Okay, let's talk about tequila So tequila is all tequila is made in Mexico And all tequila is made from the agave plant So the agave plant has a sweetness uh, Natural sweet sweetness is, uh, that produces like fructose and supposedly it's supposed to be healthier type of sugar it's, uh, The system doesn't wreck our body doesn't recognize the system all these people are talking about health benefits. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you to drink tequila because of for health benefits. Okay, people like drinking tequila, and, and so I'm not. I'm going to stay away from that part. Um, so there um, again, the agave plant takes between six to eight years to make, and so uh, it's a long process. And again, if people don't wait, of course the tequila won't be as good because it won't be as ripe. So um, it's a big plant with lots of roots. You have to cut off all the roots to get to the middle fruit, which is a big brown fruit, which is called the pina. The pina, uh, one pina produces about a case of tequila. And um, in the, in the um, different wineries, they'll, they'll show you how much they produce each day of this. Um, there are different levels of tequila, which I didn't know about, right? Um, so the first level is the Blanco, which is what most people drink when they, sh they shoot tequila or they have it in mixed drinks. I always thought tequila was white, like white in color. I didn't think it had any colors. So uh, the other thing is that it's important that you see on the bottom, I'm going to um, do close-ups on each of these bottles, that you see 100% uh, blue agave. Um, if it doesn't say that, it just says blue agave, that means they do not have to use 100%. So they only have to use, by law, 51% blue agave. They can use other um, sugars to ferment and distill. And of course, that lowers the cost and lowers the product. So all good um, tequila says on it 100% agave, okay, or blue agave. So that's the, uh, the kind of the entry. Most people understand this. It's a sipping, it's a mixing, a shooting type of tequila. Then we go up a bit um, and then we go to this called Reposito, Reposado, which is resting uh, tequila. So this means that the tequila has been aged in oak, some type of oak, usually some barrels. Um, between 2 and 12 months. So what will happen is the color, as you can see, is a little bit darker. It's not white, right? Um, and that's surprising to me. So this is more like a sipping tequila. This is not a tequila you would shoot. This is not a tequila you would um, put in mixed drinks. So uh, more expensive, right, in terms of the price. Then you go to Anijo tequilas. So Anijo tequilas are aged anywhere between um, um, one, one to I think three years um, in again oak and that will 
uh, create again a color change and then you go to Grand Anil which is anything that's aged over three years and this is Grand Anil right and uh, we'll, I'll talk about each one specifically but you can see I think most people would be surprised if I gave this out and to you is that tequila yes this is tequila so this is to me just neat that I never even understood this um, so anyways let's focus in on each bottle and then I'll talk about each um, of the tequilas I'm trying uh, individually yeah, I would like to focus on each of the bottles so on the Patron Silver or Blanco um, you'll see it's got a hundred percent agave and I don't think it's much of a problem in Canada but in other parts of the world it is a big problem so you'll see um, these initials and I'm trying to get the right light on it um, it says NON and then there's a number and then CRT so you know these are certifications from the um, uh, the Mexican tequila board and I'll kind of have a bit more information in the comment section but each winery has a has a number uh, associated with it so I guess if you're worried about um, yeah I don't think it's a much problem in Canada and probably not in America but if you're ever worried about uh, fake or knockoff tequilas um, that's the certification and then they still hand number each bottle so this is hand bottling of each bottle of uh, Patron now we're going to move over to uh, Terramana and this is Reposado, you'll see it 100% pure agave again um, small batch, they say it's gluten free um, basically every tequila is gluten free and also handmade, most tequilas are handmade also so that's more a sales feature um, still good obviously, 100% agave uh, it says that um, tells you it's in uh, matured in oak barrels it's actually I think on the website says bourbon barrels not much calories but that's applicable to all um, tequilas Dwayne Johnson the rock signature love that and then also on the bottom of that you'll see the code again NOM 1613 CRT last is the Adictivo tequila and you look at this it's a decanter style so look at this the top of that that does contain uh, tequila that's I'm led to believe it's a shot of tequila so at the end you can just take this off and this is a shot I guess you use it as a shot glass but it looks kind of uncomfortable mm -hmm. um, but anyways a beautiful bottle beautiful design um, you'll see in there that's the name of the um, owner and I'll have that in the comment section again extra Nijo, which means it's aged more than three years in oak. It says French oak barrels, 100% agave. Um, and it's again bottled. I think a lot of these are small production and they like to have, so that's the name of the owner. And let me see where the code, oh, there's the code, NOM and CRT. That's your uh, certification that this is a good bottle of uh, wine uh, or, or tequila. Okay, what are we trying today? So, um, the first tequila we're going to have is going to be the Patron Silver. Um, and I'll mention that Patron does produce Reposado and also Granite Hills. But I always, you know, thought this was, that this is kind of, this is tequila. I thought Silver Patron was the best tequila. And I thought, well, every tequila is like this, right? Didn't know very much. So... Patron is a company, it was, um, it comes, the original Patron was produced uh, by over 50 years ago by a producer called Casa Seven Lugas, which is one of the oldest Mexican distilleries. This distillery was purchased in 1989 by um, St. Martin Spears, by two gentlemen. Um, and, you know, prior to that time, Tequila has always been drank in Mexico, but more associated with like kind of the rogue, uh, kind of cowboy lifestyle. But um, it wasn't till like the 2000s when, you know, this became a legitimate spirit where people were drinking it a lot. And, you know, there's these high end things, it's m much like bourbon, right? It's, it's all this, um, our appreciation of these spirits has all kind of, happened in the last 20 years um, although it's been around for a long time so in 2000 they actually had a marketing change 
they decided, hey, let's change the bottle. Let's make it a nice bottle. Uh, let's hand label everything. Let's hand bottle everything. Let's number each bottle. Let's um, sell it to clubs um, and, you know, kind of change the image of it from this, uh, you know, people that are just uh, rogues or cowboys or, uh, you know, people that are uh, kind of just, you know, th those uh, kind of uh, the, the, the associated like uh, tougher, tougher manly people um, to kind of a more fun drink. And that's changed it. So when these um, St. Martin Spirits bought um, the label in 1989, they, they only produced like 10,000 cases. As an example, now Patron sells over 3 million bottles a year. Um, and it was purchased in 2018 by Bacardi for $5.1 billion. So this is no longer a small company. This is a huge industry now. Um, so again, uh, that's kind of what most people would see have, or, or recognize. It is um, used a lot in, for, sh for you know, shots and also for mixed drinks. Next up is the, we're going to taste the Terra Mana uh, Reposado. This is the one that's um, this distillery is owned by, in part, by The Rock. He has some other knowledgeable people who are producing um, this. It's brand new, this distillery. Um, the name is derived from the Latin terra, meaning earth, and mana is a Polynesian word meaning spirit, so spirit of the earth. So again, uh, terra mana also produces a Blanco, but I've chosen to the Reposado. That's because that's the only thing I could get. Um, Again, it's sold out it's brand new everyone wants it because it's the rock is so cool and so um, and they're gonna do pretty well this year they're probably gonna sell hopefully 300,000 uh, cases this year probably up to a million next year so they're gonna grow uh, hopefully there'll be lots for people to try um, this is a reposado so it's gonna be aged in oak and in, in this case it's in bourbon barrels by um, between 2 and 12 months just judging by the color, I would say probably it's more towards the two month. It's it doesn't seem like it's been aged uh, a long time just by the color, um, and yeah, let's try it out. So again, we'll uh, I gave a lot of description on the bottle. It's kind of nice, and then the last one we're gonna drink is the Adactivo. So Adactivo again is a very um, although the uh, the producer has been uh, producing um, tequila for three generations, the actual um, this distillery has only been around since 2016. So very distinct, um, neat bottle, aged in French oak barrels for seven years, and that's why you know the pricing is a little bit more. Um, really neat uh, bottle design, and yes, there is spirit up at the top of this, and that's um, a great bottle design. So um, it's just interesting because I never realized that. Tequila had so many different um, variety, and um, it's just neat for me to uh, learn new things. Okay, let's have a taste of each of these. Um, and again, I don't profess to be a knowledgeable tequila taster. I do have them on ice just because I don't think I had them cold enough. Um, I do like them a little bit chilled. So again, and um, I am also going to reflect on some notes that I... Um, had from other people that did drink with me and what they thought about it. So let's go to the Patron Silver, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. So to me, Patron Silver, um, not a lot of aroma, but this is the purest form, let's say they, uh, they like Blancos because it's the purest form of uh, tequila, it's the purest form of agave. Nice thing about agave is it's got a citrusy, and that's why lime and lemon go well with it. It's got a little bit of citrusy elements to it, but it's got a sweetness, but a, not a huge sweetness. It's got a natural sweetness to it. And so I can see how people would like this, you know, straight or with mixed drinks. It's a kind of a, a subtle sweetness, um, but very pleasant. It got a bit of a burn, but not, um, you know, it's still good quality uh, tequila. I actually quite enjoy it, so. 
and you know it's it does have a aftertaste of course of citrusy elements and that agave that's a sweetness but a little bit of um, a bite like a citrusy bite um, and I think that's that's pure agave so I think for people that like agave and that taste they'll really enjoy that and I really think it's a really quality product the next one is the Terra Mana. This is uh, the Reposado. So on the smell, it actually smells, you can smell a little bit more. So this was aged in bourbon uh, cast. So you get a bit, you do get a bit of woodiness actually on this. So on the taste, it's beginning not to taste what uh, most people consider as tequila. It doesn't have the burn. It actually tastes more like a scotch. Um, it's got some carameliness. It's smooth. Um, so um, I would say it's kind of in between um, if you're a scotch and a tequila. So if you like that burn of tequila, stay with the Blanco and it's very pure. This is very smooth. Um, and so if you're not a person that likes the burn of tequila, you might actually really enjoy this. Yeah, it's a really relaxing drink. Um, again, I'm sure you know tequila, um, blancos go great with cerveches, with seafood, with any Mexican dishes. This would go really well with um, like a, like steaks, like beef fajitas, um, pork, um, enchilada. Um, I can see that with this because it's a little bit heavier and it's a little bit more substantial, uh, not as citrusy. The last one is the um, Adaptivo, and this is the Granadillo that's been aged in oak for seven years. So this, I would say that most people, if I served this to you, would not even think this is a tequila. They wouldn't believe me if I said it's a tequila because it doesn't have the characteristics which we normally associate with tequila. It's got lots of oak aging, very smooth. It's very caramelized. Um, it almost tastes like rum, but as I'm talking on the aftertaste, you can taste the agave, the sweetness of the agave it almost tastes now like sugarcane sweet. Um, it's a totally different drink and it will blow your mind. Um, if you say, I don't like tequila, you actually might like this a lot better. Um, I would say this is like an after dinner drink. Um, I wouldn't really pair this with Mexican food or, uh, you know, ceviches. I wouldn't do that. I think this is a really relaxing uh, drink that like you would drink it like a scotch or a port after dinner. Um, yeah, I think it would really go well with um, the um, chimichurras in, uh, dipped in chocolate sauce. Oh, the, sorry, the churros, not chimichurras. The churros um, dipped in chocolate sauce. I think that would go really well with this. Yeah, it's got a really caramelized flavor to it. So I hope you enjoyed that tasting. Um, and uh, again, this is a one-off for me, but I thought I'd just share my comments uh, because I didn't know anything about tequila and I, I probably still don't, but um, this was kind of useful for me for my um, education and I, I really enjoyed this. Until next time, happy drinking.